States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Always a good reminder why we're here. All right, I need to find my notes. Over there. I'm going to add an executive session to the agenda for personnel. I promise it will be mostly brief, but I feel not it's necessary. And in addition to that, I would like to table all personnel and decisions until after the executive session. I'll make a motion to table the personnel and go have an executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We will have executive session tonight. Sorry, it was kind of a teaser. Didn't look like we were going to have it, but we do need to have it. Um, I need a motion to approve the minutes from the August 1st council meeting. I'll make that motion. I have a question. Let's go back and approve the agenda formally. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. Um, so the agenda with the um, changes. I'll make the motion that's approved. I would just add my motion to approve. Well, that's fine. Yours is fine as it is. We can second it Okay. I'll make the motion. All in favor? Oh, oh, yeah. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have an amended agenda for tonight, including the executive session. And tabling. Personnel until after executive session. Uh, moved by Schwarzenbach, seconded by Spillane to approve the minutes. Of August 1st. I have a question. Uh, okay, I have a second. Okay. Discussion? Thank you. Uh, Bob? Last personnel continued, um, dealing with uh, Lori. Mm -hmm. Looking at previous minutes, it seems like every time we um, refer to an employee uh, in any kind of action, I guess for lack of a better word, uh, whether they're promoted or whatever, uh, the pay is also referenced, uh, what the previous pay was and what the new pay is. Does that apply in this situation? Uh, since she did you know, lose some salary? She did not. Well, you lose salary? Oh, change in pay. Yes, you're right. I thought you meant time off. No. no. Okay, so because she lost her safety coordinator position, she didn't think she was going to lose some salary. So should correct. that be indicated here? Yes. We can Yeah, we need to add that. Okay. Thank you. We can add that um, and then yeah. talk position. about it and table personnel yeah. after executive yeah. session. Yeah. All right? Okay. This you can add. And, and, and looking at, you know, through previous minutes, any time an employee's pay is effective, Missy, do you know what that amount is? Well, to, to clarify for the record, it would be a reduction of $0.20 from our existing side. It's removing a safety coordinator title and responsibilities. Her last two minutes operating has not changed. That's unchanged, but the additional role of safety coordinator has been removed with the $0.20 cent per hour compensation. So we can just add And someone will take that on at some point soon, hopefully. Thank you. Yep. yep. That's a good question, Bob. Thank you. Any other discussion on the minutes from August 1st? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Bills in between. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Current claims. 
Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? I have a question. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'm just curious because I don't know. It says here Maria March for the painting of the depot ticket booth. What is that? It's down by the depot across from the Red Rock. There's that, it used to be a green, kind of like the wagonal structure. It's been painted out blue. We did some restoration to it. It was rotting from the inside out and outside in basically. So it was restored and painted out to be hopefully weatherproof for a while longer. <coughs> it's a small structure, but it did require one side to be hand painted, uh, each letter individually around what was existing, the lettering. It's one that says the town rules on it. Okay, thank you. Not the current town rules. <laughs> good, yeah, not the current town rules. <laughs> get your horse out of place. Very good question. <laughs> Any others? Um, yeah, to follow up on that question then, um, I'm still trying to understand when we decide to use city personnel to do things and when we don't. Um, could, the, could some city um, staff have done the majority of this? Uh, with her to just come in and then do the delivery after the building itself was painted and um, possibly reduce the cost? We could have done more in-house to do it. The big thing is you're dividing labor. If we take somebody out somewhere else to do that, they can't do their usual job responsibilities. Looking at our, uh, our staff, we keep them pretty busy with other things to do. I mean, guys, Gerald, he's got a list of things that we still take care of in the parks. <laughs> and so, um, with that, I was comfortable using professional services to do that while well, our crew did other items. It's a little more artistic, too. Yeah, than for that. Slap and yeah, please go and look at it because it is something that requires more than uh, just slapping some paint on the side of the phone. Our, our guys thought to do some restoration for the trim work. So we did, we did the base and the window trim and also sprayed for the wasps. Um, but when it comes to the painting, we could have had our personnel on it, but it would have taken them probably, let's say, comfortably 25 to 30 hours to do it and to take them off other jobs which were already short staffed to begin with uh, it'd be better in our to get other stuff done to have it contracted out and it is a main focal point for tourists i mean they actually do read it and when they stop at the depot so it was something we wanted to look nice is it done yes so it's, final bill is it's been trimmed painted and all so it kind of looks like a Smoky cloud. It's weathered, yeah. We, it's a given it's <laughs> aged. We don't want to give it a brand new shiny paint job and then it takes away its, okay. its historic look okay. to it. Okay. So, yeah, it's supposed to be distressed and this weather allows it to get more distressed too with rainfall and precipitation. Okay, Craig? You're telling me it takes the city 25 hours to paint that? 30 hours. Is that going to be the lettering? Oh, well, lettering, I agree. Not well, that's what we're talking about. They could have painted so everything but the front where the lettering is. And yeah, they could have done, done that. Yes, you're right. But to do the whole project with 25 to 30 hours, you say that. And just to remind our council and public, too, we are fully staffed in the parks department and maintenance department. We have people that take summer vacations. We have summer seasonal help. That they're 16 year olds. They go on vacation. And then we also have another staff. Personnel member that was asked to work last week due to other reasons, so we were definitely constrained for people to do get jobs done. And we're still that way. It'd be nice to have some more help. Any other questions on any other item? <coughs> All in favor? Okay. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Gary. Thank you for the discussion. Appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> we are going to do some quarterly updates right now, and uh, Don Johnson from our, the library, she's our director there, will give us an update on the library. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Um, we have quite a bit going on at the library this summer. First of all, we um, gave out 68 new, new cards in the months of May, June, and July. Um, we checked out 12,180 items. Our patron visits counted to 14,143 people. Our ebook checkout was 1,245. Um, the events at the library, number 24 events for the last three months, or for May, June, and July, I will say that most of those were our summer reading classes. We had, most days we had two classes a day. 
Um, for that, we did have Rapid City Rush come in for our season finale for the summer reading program. It was great. The storm evaded long enough, abated long enough for us to do our um, obstacle course, and then Nugget was there to hand out the uh, Olympic medals to the kids and adults who finished that course. And the weather has really not cooperated with our screen on the green this year. I think we had one at the library and one at Centennial Park. But we're going to work on that for next year. Order up some better weather. Order up some better weather. Just don't do it on Tuesday nights. Maybe that's... Maybe Is that's, that it? <laughs> that's our men's league golf night, so it always... Oh, rains. okay. That's why it rains. We'll make a note for that. No more Tuesdays. Um, at the events that we had this summer, we had 432 people in attendance. Um, our meeting rooms in three months were used 110 times, and our computers were used um, just 4,924 logins to our computers in May, June, and July. Um, a little summary for our summer reading program, we did have 120 participants who logged in 893 hours of reading. So we're very proud of our children for coming and having a good time. We certainly enjoy having them in the month of June. Um, we're gearing up for our fall programming. We're going to continue with our lap sit and our story time um, on Thursdays and Fridays. We've scheduled our Friday events because we have no school. We have set events for um, the winter months. The first Friday at 2 o'clock, we have a movie for school-age kids. The second Friday at 2 o'clock, we have a young adult programming. Um, book club, you know, it's the young adults show up and we do stuff with them. The third Friday of the month at 2 o'clock, we always do Lego Day. So show up. It's not just for the kids. We have parents and everybody shows up. We have tubs of Legos that we put out to use. And this year, we're going to start something new. It's called Makerspace on the fourth Friday of the month at 2 o'clock. We're teaming up with a national education program called STEAM or STEM. That stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. Um, the activities that we're going to provide are really, if you think of them as old school, we're just going to have three or four um, areas set up with an arts and crafts thing, but they're going to be more science oriented or engineering-oriented. Legos would be an engineering project. Um, you know, an art project going on there. Um, a math project. Um, we have all kinds of games and stuff that we're collecting to, to promote the STEAM and the STEM program along with the schools. And it's, they call it makerspace in the library, library systems. Um, our computer education classes when Rachel attends Library Institute last year, they did a, a, nationally, um, a national program on evaluating your library. She answered all these questions, do we do this, don't we do this, do we plan on doing this? And it came back with recommendations for improvements that we can make for serving our public. Um, and Rachel ha and Rachel has chosen to um, build our technology and helping our public work with the technology that we have and helping us get the technology that our public is looking for. When I went to um, the convention in Orlando, I went to the National Library Convention, I went to the National <coughs> Edge meeting and listened to what some other libraries plan to do this. Um, how we're going to implement some improvements is up our um, computer education classes that we give. Um, we're going to give classes on basic computer. You know, this is the mouse, this is the taskbar, whatever. We're going to have classes on how to do searches on the computer, how to save information either to folders or to flash drives, or um, how to take your saved information, um, on, put it on social media sites, to email, Facebook, um, Twitter, Tweet, Instagram, all those things. We're going to have some classes on how to use Word, the Word program and the Excel program. And um, one, we're going to have a class on utilizing the State Library's e-resources. They provide us with 
about 30 databases that we can um, that we have free access to either in the library or using your library card at home. Um, some of those include children's. Every single children's book is online. All you have to do is sit down and, and it walks you right through it. Um, encyclopedias, there's a website on there where you can get all of the major daily newspapers by going to the, the state library site. And one that we're really going to promote is a Learning Express site. You can go on Learning Express, um, study for your GED, your ACT, your SAT. You can take practice tests for those. You can um, take te um, aptitudes tests to find out if you're more inclined to be a nurse and then what all it takes to be a nurse. And you can take some testing and they'll give you educational places, websites that you can go to to follow in any of these that you want. You can take practice tests to be a fireman, practice tests to be a beautician. It, it's just, it, it helps you write resumes. It's just an amazing website. We're going to offer some classes and show our public that want to come in how they can utilize this website to, to help out Hot Springs and, and to help them do what they, they want to do technology-wise in our community. Um, one of the last things that Rachel wants to do is have what we call it, we're going to call it a Tech Tuesday. Tuesdays, and we think it's going to be like from 4 to 7 because we're open late those days. Bring in your iPad, bring in your Kindle. How come my computer keeps locking up? Well, it's because you have 86 windows open. You need to close some of those out. Um, one of the things that we want to hit on that is we're not computer techies as far as fixing your computers. But we can certainly show you how to find Facebook and how to get signed into your email and some things, just some basic computer skills with your new devices that you have. So Tech Tuesdays. Um, tomorrow we'll be setting up a display from the South Dakota State Historical Society Living, Tra Living Traditions Art Show. It'll be a Native American art show. Um, and we got it in the mail. We'll set it all up. It's going to show the Native Americans artwork from historical times <coughs> in the 1800s, what we, can, what we would consider not that long ago, and then modern artwork like pottery, the three different time frames. Um, we're really excited to have it. We think it's just a beautiful thing Is that there's a time period that that's there? Um, we're gonna we're gonna set it up tomorrow. It'll be here until October 14th. So it's gonna be here for uh, yeah. Um, the Friends of the Library are holding their triathlon on September 3rd. Um, I just came from the Friends meeting. It's really gearing up. We're it's looking to be just as busy as it always is. They're always needing volunteers to help. It starts out early in the morning on Saturday, and you'll be done by noon, but as the triathlon implies, they'll be bicycling, swimming, and running. And there's all different age groups. It's a nationally recognized um, event, so there are people that come to this specifically to get points to win, you know, national recognition for attending triathlons. So, so it's a very high quality event, and if anyone's interested in helping out with that, give us a call at the library. The last thing I have is about continuing education. The librarians are all about knowing what's out there. Um, Amanda, Rachel, Amy Lee, and myself, um, if we haven't already attended um, webinars online, we can sit in our office with our headphones on and, and get library training. We've all got something in the works to listen to, if not having already done it. And they include things like um, rural library leadership, the new young and adult um, authors, readers program. You get to see what's out there in the latest for young adult literature. Um, technology in your library and updates from the state interlibrary loan practices and what the state has to offer us. So on any given, on any given week up there, one of us is, is listening for an hour or so on the computer to get some training is something that we need to know. 
Um, Amanda's going to attend a book repair workshop in Rapid City at the end of the month so that we can keep the books that we have in good shape and get some more life out of them. Um, Amy Lee is celebrating, has celebrated her third year with us at the library. We're really proud to have her at the front desk. Rachel has finished her second year. So that's what's happening at the library. Do you have any questions? I have one for you. Yes, ma'am. Um, you have <coughs> 68 new cards. Do you have a percentage of how many are from our community in town versus out of town? I don't have any numbers for those 68 cards in particular. I do have the numbers that um, I presented to the county commissioners, okay. and I don't have those in front of me, but I want to say it's like 38% county, and then the rest are city. Okay, because we did our budget, and we were concerned how we were, and that's yeah. the number we needed to know. Thanks. Yep, yeah. and if you give me a call tomorrow at the library, I can actually get what those actual numbers were, but that's about what the breakout is. It's a really good number, though. Yeah. Quite yeah. a lot. Good. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Don. You guys are awesome up there. Lots of programs. <laughs> Don't ever say there's nothing to do. <laughs> it took her 10 minutes to list what they're doing. So. Um, I'm Amanda Scott, Summer Recreation, just um, here to give you a summary of things that happened over the summer. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the City of Hot Springs and our City Council for allowing Summer Recreation to continue to provide uh, recreational activities for the youth in this community. Um, and I'd also like to say it's nice to see that um, our community is becoming a very active community um, for people of all ages and all interests, um, and, it, and it does start with our kids too, so thank you. Um, I'd like to remind you that uh, our recreation program provides job opportunities for members um, of our community and it also provides our students um, an opportunity to develop self-esteem, um, to learn how to build positive relationships with um, others, uh, especially people in the community, and uh, positive role models, uh, working cooperative, cooperatively with others. Um, once again, we offer 13 programs um, for Summer Rec. We had 650 participants as a total um, for all summer. Uh, we did see, um, let's see, gymnastics had 180 participants. That was the highest. That went up 40 kids from last year. Um, T-ball went up, volleyball went up, golf went up, and softball went up, um, as did baseball. And I'll talk to you a little bit about baseball here in just a sec. Um, some changes that we had, we do had, uh, we did have new tiered pricing. Uh, baseball, we charged about $30. Um, just, it, it causes, a, we need a, a lot of equipment for these kids and um, a lot of coaching time and things like that. Weightlifting was $25. Um, softball was 10 gymnastics was 10 Art and swimming were $7, which is very good. I mean, if you get a class of, uh, you know, four weeks for $7 for swimming, that's a pretty good deal. Um, and then all other programs remained the same. Um, let's see, some difficulties that, uh, well, some, I'll keep, I'll stay in the changes for now. Um, the hardest, one of the hardest things was finding a swimming instructor. And um, I was talking to Nolan about that. That was very last minute we had one applicant all summer long for swimming and it somehow wonderfully worked out that she was able to get certified um, she did a wonderful job if you ever knew Linda you think oh my gosh that swimming program would ever, would never last without Linda Stoll but it did and we did wonderful some changes that we had with it were um, we had to change um, we had to have two sessions of four weeks um, we used to do three three-week sessions, but because Sarah had, she's a teacher, she had to go back, um, so we had to cut that a little bit short, but we actually saw some positive things out of that. Um, looking back at our swimming records from last year, uh, we at least had anywhere from five to seven kids fail the fir their first session, um, and this year, because we had an extra week to teach them um, the strokes and the safety, uh, I think maybe for each session we had two or three fail and the rest of them passed. And our classes are about 10 per, per class. 
Um, parents were very, very happy about that. Um, the students had a lot of fun with that. They had more time to learn the strokes. Um, we were very blessed to have um, a good group of instructors who were there the whole time paying attention to the kids. And of course, that's where I spent most of my time making sure that they were paying attention to the kids. <laughs> um, so um, that it worked out really well, and I hope that she does come back. Um, she does live here during the summer, so let's hope that she does come back and do that again for us next year. Um, baseball switched over to um, a competitive league in the past. Um, if you've ever been involved with baseball, we um, were in, I wouldn't say it was quite a league, but we would have games with Custer, Hermosa, and Edgemont, and it was kind of, um, you know, if you didn't have a full team, we'll mix you up with our team and have a scrimmage, and it really wasn't that competitive, so it really didn't appeal to a lot of the parents and a lot of the kids to play. Uh, but since uh, Mike Remington came to us, um, and asked if we could switch over to competitive league with Shatter, Nebraska. We had 40 participants. Um, we had enough team. We had two minor teams, which are ages 7 to 10, and one majors team, which is um, 12 and under. And um, I spoke to Mike yesterday, and he was just so thankful um, that we were able to do this for the kids. Um, he thinks that we're going to have 40 plus kids next year, have enough for four teams. Um, parents were really interested, um, and if you didn't know, they had to com commute every week to Chavern, um to play a game because our, our fields, we didn't have lights, um, basically was, was, was the issue there. Um, so we hope, um, if we are in this league next year, which I'm sure we will be, um, that we get our field up to date so that we can host home games here. Um, there was even talk about getting our concession stand up and going, um, allowing people maybe to use that because it is in very good shape um, and that will bring more people to our community. Um, so I hope to get that up and going for us next year. Um, let's see. One difficulty that I did have um, this year was finding um, instructors. And I look for, and what I look for in instructors is that they are comfortable working with young children, obviously. But um, I do look that they're a little bit older adults that can handle teaching kids. Um, and I kind of became the person to not make eye contact because I would literally bug people and, you know, ask them, you know, you know, tell them that they would be great for our programs and things like that. It was, it was very hard, especially for swimming and for gymnastics, which were our two uh, most popular programs. Um, it seems to appeal because of the hours and you know, because our summer programs only last six to eight weeks, it seems to only appeal to teenagers. Um, so I was very fortunate to be able to have, um, you know, stay-at-home moms teach. Um, I had retirees um, help out. Um, Ron Foster was one of them, and he did, he had T-ball actually. <laughs> he did a tremendous job with those kids. Uh, he loved every minute of it. Um, so. That was one big issue that I did have um, this year. It was pretty much down to the wire. It took me quite a bit of time to do that. Um, let's see. Any questions? I just want to tell you thanks. Yeah. I when uh, Joyce Farrell retired after 30 years, I was very, very concerned about you know what was going to happen to the summer rep program, and I am just so grateful how you taken the ball and ran with it. Well, I, I can use that. Thank you, and I also wanted to thank um, all the city employees as well for supporting for supporting us and you know making that go really, really well for us and our kids. And we hope to hopefully get some more programs um, in in the future, but we resources and people to find it's kind of tough, but we do have some goals to get. So. And she did casually mention the lights at the ball game, which I thought was <laughs> a, kind, a kind way to throw it out there. Well, thank you. But we do want to we do want to be competitive if we've got a group that wants to do that. So we'll continue to work on that. Thank you. And I also have heard from our softball parents that they now want to join a competitive softball league as well. So we'll be talking about that hopefully in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Last but not least, item C, which it seems appropriate for the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for uh, giving me a couple minutes here to kind of tell you what we've been doing for the last, uh, kind of the end of July, August, and then what we got coming up. Um, so again, our Hot Air Balloon Festival uh, was very small this year. We've got it planned for August 25th and 26th of 2017. It'll include hot air balloons, uh, gyrocopters, skydivers, gliders, possibly drones out at the city airport. Uh, then we're going to be doing a, uh, Jason has given us the okay to do the tethered night glow out at the Southern Hills Golf Course on the driving range. So we're hoping to have eight to ten balloons. Uh, we would use the, the clubhouse as kind of a concession area and people can just kind of mill around there. Um, we're hoping between seven and nine, maybe seven to ten, depending on, you know, uh, you know, we're looking at having music out there, hoping people will really enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's a great venue, and we hope that it goes over well. Um, one of the events that we had uh, last weekend was uh, a veterans charity ride that came through Hot Springs. Uh, Nolan and I had uh, worked with Dave Frey, uh, you know, with this organization, trying to you know, make all the logistics and things happen here in Hot Springs. Um, I wasn't able to make it to the dinner. I was here with the American Solar Challenge the whole night, but uh, it sounded like everything went well. The mayoral procl proclamation that uh, that you did, Cindy, and they were you know just you know ecstatic about. Yeah, I'll have to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> so, um, but. Uh, uh, they're, they're looking at doing this event next year, uh, talking with Don Ackerman. We would like to see if we can get them to stay here a couple days and maybe do different rides with their group um, and the Legion riders can take them out. So uh, we're in the process of, of working with Dave, seeing if they can make that happen or not. Um, but that went, uh, went very well. Uh, American Solar Challenge, again, um, that was like 12 schools uh, you know, across the country with solar cars. Uh, the event, uh, our weather wasn't great for them. Uh, the day before, they had uh, cloudy weather, so all their batteries, you know, weren't charging. Um, and a lot of the, the vehicles had to go to Wind Cave in their trailers, and then they drove them across the finish line there. But that's something they deal with each year when they do this solar challenge. So it, it's all at the mercy of the, of the sun. But uh, everything went well. We brought them back here, and uh, they had their uh, dinner and award ceremony in the theater. And uh, you know, they, you know, Gail Luke, the, the head person on that, you know, thought everything went great. And um, they don't know it'll be in, in another couple of years. I don't know what route they're going to take, but uh, I think we did ourselves very good for what we did available for them. And uh, you know, Kara, thanks for uh, you know housing all of them and or as many as we could. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, that time of year is tough with the rally. But uh, we tried to get as many in hot springs as we could. So thank you on that. Um, some new events we've got for 2017 is uh, it'll be an art walk, uh, which is similar to our wine walk, but we would have artists in our retail businesses, and uh, we set the date for that September 23rd, 2017 trying to do it in coordination with Climb Hot Springs um, if, they, if they keep the same date um, uh, you know, next year like that. So that way they can do the Climb Hot Springs and then you know, be able to do you know, a wine walk uh, in Hot Springs. We would have that in longer you know, sessions. So trying to put events together, we haven't told the Climb Hot Springs people that, but uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're planning on right now. So right. Uh, and then we've got a scavenger hunt that we're looking at doing. Uh, uh, April 4th through the 19th, uh, and this again would be uh, you're trying to tie in some of our retail businesses on the, on the truck bypass and things like that that we can't do you know, always, but it would be a scavenger hunt where uh, they would have different clues that would send them to the next business and we would give them like two weeks to um, you know, do the whole process and, and try to find the clues and and once you got done with it you would have a saying and then we would give a prize to the um, your first place winner in that. So that's a new event we've got for 2017. Um, our A committee, uh, we helped serve lunch on Thursday, August 4th, and uh, did breakfast uh, you know, Friday, August 5th for the Fall River County Fair for all the 4 H participants. Uh, you know, trying to do our, do our share over there. Uh, we'll be working with uh, the teachers, setting up the conservation field day for all the seventh graders in Fall River County. Um, they will be, it'll be the, like the first week of October, we've got to work with the teachers on that, and that'll be uh, students from Ulrich, Edgemont, and Hot Springs that partake in that. Uh, egg Appreciation Banquet, uh, we set a date for November 19th, 
2016. Um, Events and Promotions Committee, uh, where we'll be doing Small Missa Saturday, uh, November 26th. Uh, working on the Cookie Cruise for Christmas in the Hills. Uh, we'll be doing a storefront decorating contest for Christmas in the Hills also. And then we'll do our normal uh, Ho 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 promotion uh, during the Christmas time. <coughs> Ambassadors, uh, this month we went to uh, Works in Clay with Tom Eastburn. Uh, New York Life, uh, Josh Scott, and then uh, Bourbon County, uh, Jeff Comsewer, uh, a new business that's opened here in town. Um, tourism side, uh, at the depot, uh, the top five states that, that have requested information from Hot Springs are Minnesota, Wisconsin, Texas, Illinois, and California. Uh, the top five states that actually visit the depot are Minnesota, Colorado, Nebraska, Iowa, and Wisconsin. As of today, we've mailed out uh, almost 11,000 welcome magazines uh, to potential guests that want to visit Hot Springs. And uh, you'll continue that through, the, through this period. Uh, right now, we've had almost um, 8,000 people come through the depot so far through July. And uh, we'll keep that open through September on there. Upcoming events that we've got here in Hot Springs that we either help with or just help promote is the Full Moon Dance Party. That'll be Friday, August 19th from 4 p.m. to midnight at Centennial Park. Uh, we've got the Wildcat Classic August 20th. Uh, the start and finish is at uh, Chautauqua Park. Uh, Nate Ritterbush has been working hard to get that event put together. And uh, right now I think he's got 40 uh, pre-signed up for that. So he's hoping to get 80 to 100 people at that. So we'll see what happens. Um, the Adventure Cycling Group that we had today in Centennial Park is coming back August 30th. Um, right now they've got uh, 60 to 80 participants, and uh, we'll try to make sure that the water stays off for them there at Centennial Park this year. <laughs> we had some electrical issues. <laughs> yeah, we had some, we had some electrical issues, and the sprinklers went off after they uh, you know turned the, the power system on. But uh, I'll try to make sure water make sure that doesn't happen again this year. So. Oops. Uh, then we also have the 19th Annual Southern Hills Triathlon, September 3rd. And uh, then we've got our Badger Clark Cowboy Poetry and Music Gathering, September 9th and 10th. Uh, the 9th will be at the Allen Ranch, and then everything else will take place at the Mueller Center here on the 10th. Uh, Mickelson Trail Trek will be serving lunch at the Minicata Trailhead, September 19th. And right now, there's 682 participants that will be feeding there at lunch. So it was 635 last year. So. They're, they're maxed out of what, what they can do in that area. Uh, we'll also have Pioneer Days at the museum September 10th, and then Climb Hot Springs uh, will be again, again here in Hot Springs on September 24th. So that's just a little bit of the things we do on top of our, our normal business daily. So, any questions? I just want to say it's... I just want to say it's much more exciting having you out there giving the monthly reports. I appreciate all the details and the hard work that you guys do. You've got yeah. a lot going thank on you. in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Scott. Um, we did have a council person report, and obviously Scott does a much better job. No offense. <laughs> more detail. Yeah. More, more details. But um, I appreciate you stepping up and, and doing that for us. Um, and I have to tell people that Nolan wrote the proclamation. I've been getting all kinds of credit for that. And, hey, but you read it, so. I, I read it. I you did a great job. I read it well. <laughs> but uh, I was pretty busy that week, and Nolan stepped up and helped me with that. But um, a very good cause, so I, I really appreciate everything you did. I mean, we had some calls that night and trying to keep our city humming that night, and we had a lot of people here and not an ounce of sun for motorcyclists and solar car challenge. They still had good spirits, so um, I'll give you a lot of credit for that. I appreciate it. Not the weather. The other. <laughs> we all have to work on the weather next year. Thank you all. All right, um, I'm going to move to community communications from the public. I did not get any requests, so if there are none of those, I'm, we voted to table personnel until after executive session, so I'm going to go to committee reports. Um, <coughs> Carol Ann, you had an admin and finance meeting. 
we did, and it was long, and I'm going to be as brief as I can. If you need any more information about anything I mentioned, just get in touch with me. We had a conference call with the city auditors, Donna Dinker, regarding word changes in the 2015 audit with the same opinions. <coughs> we discussed the need for approval of rate changes at the Mueller. Changes will go through the city administrator and parks committee. We tabled for the next admin meeting the policy for elected officials consulting the city attorney. The mayor will make inquiries regarding hiring a local attorney as city attorney. <coughs> She's working on that. The committee requested mayor, uh, the mayor council chief close on staying on budget, tabled a proposal for an economic study for Evans Plunge and Southern Hills Golf Course. The monetary value of this was debated. We approved the development of a random drug and alcohol testing program for all full-time and part-time city employees. Uh, city administrator and finance officer will work on this uh, policy. <coughs> Uh, during the discussion of the finance officer's reports, we discussed the bid spending and the need for them to have a cash reserve. Uh, SDSU will do four hours of training for elected and appointed officials in late October or November. That's in the budget. If you give Misty dates, if you're going to be gone, it would help her. And the weight last, the weight funding proposal. We're confident that Nolan can do most of this in-house, and he's going to talk about it when he gives his report, and that's all. Thank you. It was a good meeting, and that's a very good brief summary. Thank you. Um, airport advisory committee, you have met yet? No, we did not have any. All right. And have you met with next week? Okay. Um, back to you, Carol Ann, the Downtown Historic Preservation Commission. Okay. Well, I'll be brief again. We met August the 3rd. We approved signs at 209 North River, 713 North River. Mary Goulet uh, requested permission for a mural to be painted on the side of the old Robs building. Uh, Ms. Barberi is going to work with her on that, and they'll come back in the spring. The city provided information on the desire to paint electrical boxes with mural decorations. No uh, presentation was made. We'll need council approval. I assume you'll come back later with that. A <coughs> webinar scheduled Tuesday, August the 16th at 5 p.m. If the topic is vacant buildings and <coughs> plans for filling them. Um, Okay, take that. <coughs> she, uh, Ms. Barberi also gave us information regarding, regarding court action on the community action building. That's it. And uh, Carolyn, uh, when on August 16th is that what time? Uh, five o'clock. Uh, here. Okay. At Miller's at at Miller. Miller. It says five it here. Says five. Uh -huh. Yeah, it may that may not be right. But that's what I mean. mm -hmm. Thanks again, Carolyn. Um, Kara, this one you still have? <laughs> yes. Evans Plunge. Okay, in August we have um, we have a custodial position available um, for three to four people that we're hiring. We've hired one and possibly two already. And August 6th we have a pool party. We had a pool party scheduled, but we had to cancel it because we had 55 degree weather. The weather didn't cooperate of an ongoing thing here lately. Uh, we have a rally special for the rally riders, board and close, it's half off admission. And in September, we have a plunge into reading program that'll begin again, we did this last year. September 11th, we have that Patriots Day where we have a free admission for the first responders. September 24th, we have a King of the Rings and a Cannonball contest at the Evans Plunge. <laughs> There's also on August 22nd, is that right, Barbara? The photo shoot right. for those August 22nd, there's going to be a photo shoot to match the existing photo that was done in 1906. And so it's at 5 or 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 
So the next meeting will be the third Tuesday, Thursday in September at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Again, if you don't have anything, if you think there's nothing to do here, <laughs> there's a lot going on. All right, just a uh, parks, recreation, beautification, and cultural development. Camera's on you. We, we, do have a, sorry, we do have a public safety meeting this Wednesday at 2 p.m. at City Hall. That's the actual update. So yeah. uh, public works will be the 30th, I believe, this last Tuesday of the month. So that's the boring Saturday. Yeah, thank you, Dolan. No, good, good points. Um, Skyler, I don't know that you've had a meeting yet with the Golf Course Advisory Committee, but it's coming up. Our next meeting is scheduled for August 23rd at noon at the clubhouse. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. And thanks for working at a time that works well for everybody. Volunteer Fire Department. We did meet on that one. Yeah. Um, our meetings are the second Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. Um, so we met here last week. Uh, we talked to um, <coughs> the chief read Nolan's letter that he received um, with the 90,000 that was approved um, as our um, as our yearly funding, funding for for the volunteer fire department. Um, it also mentioned about the grants, um, the grants that he was going to be putting in for the bridge that'll go in between um, from from river to um, to the volunteer fire department. So we talked about that as well. Um, they replaced. Uh, vehicle, or tires on both on two of the vehicles, vehicle two and three. Um, the items came in for the grant. They applied for a grant, and that was for bunker and wild wildland gear, and that did come in. There were thank yous that were read um, from the Episcopal Church, and um, they had donated 12 cases of water for the volunteer fire department. That was much appreciated by them. Um, they voted and approved to pre pipe by propane. There was one new member voted in. Um, there's structure training set up which will be held in Pringle this fall winter-ish time and they're going to be inviting uh, other surrounding areas um, to participate in this. A uh, reminder that October 10th is Fire Protection Week and they're lining up some um, events for that. They will be having some pump and ladder and hose testing which will certify the items and they're checking out some prices on that, but that will be scheduled around Labor Day. Um, last month, there was 22 fire whistles. Um, luckily, this month, there was only 18, so that's good. So the rain gets some credit. Yes, absolutely. So there's still a lot out there, so just make sure you watch the, watch the little yeah, dial and be careful and don't be silly. And, Although the dial, don't. I don't think, always gets updated on the weekend. So I don't think it does either. Just always be so just don't. Yeah, just don't. Yeah, just, don't. <laughs> just say no to fire. Just say no to fire until the winter. Then you have a fire pit. The rest, right? It's too hot out anyway. <laughs> you get it all under control. All right, tomorrow, um, the Delta Committee for the Annual Use of the Depot. Um, for, we're just taking a look at it. We don't assume anything from this, but we're, we're going to take a look at that. <coughs> Um, there was some feedback during the budget hearings, and we've just got, uh, I believe it's Kara Hagen, Caroline Swartzenbar, myself, Chris, Kaki, and if I'm forgetting someone, I apologize, but, oh, no one, well, <laughs> no one will be there as well. Um, so, look forward to um, input, we've got some data for y'all to look at. 
Oh, it's Pat Likes. Oh, thank you. I knew yeah. that was somebody. Yeah. Pat Like will also be joining. Thank you, Caroline. Um, so that's tomorrow, I believe, at 1.30 at City Hall. Um, do I have anything else on committees? I don't believe I do. So I'm going to move back to new business. Uh, discussion of possible motion to approve the refit of lots GC34 and GC38, creating lot GC34R, which is for revised, I believe. I'll make a motion to accept that. I'll second that. Any discussion? We've been briefed on it, so um, I'm going to just go straight to the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We'll be assigning our my law soon. Right? Great. Thank you, Thank you for coming and supporting any possible questions. But like I said, Kim briefed the council quite a bit on this, so um, and we think it's the right thing, obviously. So thank you. Thank you very much. You're thank you. Thank you, guys. We're gonna move to item B under new business, discussion of possible motion to accept. 30,000 gallons of propane pre buy quote from Dakota Propane at 89 cents a gallon. Pretty good deal. <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept it. Any discussion? This was the lowest bid. Yeah. Lowest local. local. Lowest the local bid. Yeah. Tied for overall lowest. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Nolan Misty, for researching that and, and saving the uh, Misty. <laughs> for making sure we get it back here. Um, for saving the, the city where we can. We can I ask you before there. you make the, uh, on scene that you would add with historical commission approval to see? That can be a motion. Yeah. Can't you just add <coughs> to the mayor, maybe you could add that to that motion? Historical commission? commission approval because a lot of that those buildings are all of them in the historical district. It's a formality, but it's still needs to be done. Yeah. So it, it, I think what Carolyn's suggesting is in the motion for item C, it'd be the motion to approve contingent on approval by the historic preservation commission. Yeah. So you haven't looked at it yet, or you? Have? No, we. They, they hasn't gone to the, the commission. Has not commission. Okay, that's what I was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what so you want a contingency clause? Yes. Okay, got it. So item C, discussion of possible motion to award 2016 fall facade grants. With, with if I may, uh, with historical commission approval. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? I have no discussion. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Um, I have some concerns about this. Uh, I spent all day out in Ward 4 talking to five different businesses within Ward 4. I talked to 15 different voters in Ward 4. Um, none of the folks that I talked with got a warm and fuzzy feeling, um, especially as the, the council was looking at uh, asking uh, the different departments to tighten their budgets uh, for the next uh, fiscal year, calendar year, budget year. Um, as those folks are getting cut back, we're, we're now making $5,000 available for, for businesses. Uh, nobody was, was anti-business, uh, just that when they weighed um, the other departments being cut uh, as opposed to this going out um, to businesses, um, there, were, there was one person that was in favor of it, there were two that were iffy about it as far as voters. Uh, there were 12 that were opposed to it. Uh, all the five businesses that I voted that I spoke with, uh, same thing. Uh, they didn't get a warm and fuzzy feeling about it. Um, they they just didn't support uh, having the money go to them when it uh, might not be going to, to city businesses uh, or to um, city departments. There was an interesting comment from one of the businesses. Uh, they said that uh, why isn't the Chamber of Commerce doing this rather than the city with uh, the taxpayers' dollars? So. 
Uh, I just wanted to share with the, the council that as far as Ward 4 is concerned and five of the businesses within Ward 4, um, 15 people obviously isn't the whole ward, but I think 15 people is a good representation if you, you went around and talked to folks. Um, there was only one person out of all of them that, that supported doing it. So. Thank you. I'd like to add a comment to that from the people I've talked to in Ward 1, since it's a ward that I represent, and most of them are downtown businesses, that they're very, very excited that we're doing this project to increase the vitality of our downtown. They feel like this is such a nice benefit um, to the city and to their businesses, and they were really appreciative. I don't have a number, but when I'm out and about, I get comments constantly um, on how great they hit this facade grant is and what an opportunity it is for the downtown area. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Romy? I took this over and I'm, I've never been for it even when we did it. But I'm really against the uh, health food store getting when we're dressing up their building itself. They got a for sale sign in there for the last two years since you guys approved the people living down in the businesses. Now we're going to put a new awning on their building so they can sell it to help sell their building. So I, I, I think that's kind of, I don't think taxpayers, I, I know it's sales tax, but it is the taxpayers, hot springs buying things too, that should be going into this stuff. I understand your point. I, I thought about that too and I really didn't come to a conclusion, but I did think about that. Well, the sales tax is what fix, fixes your streets. The streets in Hot Springs are falling apart and we're putting money to paint people's buildings and putting onions on their buildings and we're letting the streets go to hell. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We'll let them fall apart. Well, can, can I ask a question? Because it's my understanding that the council approved to spend this money where not, really the decision of tonight is yeah, the distribution of it. Yeah. Okay. But I, I mean, you're right there. The, I assume you mean earth goods is on sure. there. To back up, I think the intent of this all is to grow our sales tax revenue. So if you're using sales tax to grow sales tax, the city is funded through sales tax, a proper tax primary, we have other sources of revenue, those are the two big ones. So if you're able to allow businesses to grow their sales, to grow their sales, we can then turn and collect more sales tax revenue, which then we use to fund our departments. I mean, two thirds goes to our departments, one third is to the, uh, sorry, one third, two thirds split. So if we're able to grow that sales tax revenue stream, then the police get more, so you the departments really, get more. Do you really think John Lafay got that much more business because they're paying the government? Yes, I think it helps. Yes. I think well, all the time. Well, the, the discussion for tonight is on the distribution of the 5000 that this council has already approved to, to fund this grant. So I just want to make sure it's very clear what we're voting on tonight. Can I ask a question? Will this have to be voted on every year? Yes. So this will come up next year to be voted on. Yeah, we go through the process. Make sure the council is supportive of the program before right. I go out and solicit for donations or solicit for applications. Okay. One more question. Um, the former Verizon building, former Verizon building, uh, was it occupied at the time that it was approved for the grant? And is it a timing thing where now it's empty? Well, Verizon was just a, a renter. The building is right. owned by Mr. Crawford. But does it have a business in it at this point? No, does, not. does he has he indicated that it, it will be soon? Well, he's got a lease. He did not just have a lease. He has a sign. It's, it's an open space for lease owned by Brian. Yeah, I think the uh, it was just giving um, you know kind of common knowledge in case you didn't know the address. This is a match for him. Yes, it is. No money is paid out until the project is completed. Right. No in kind neighbors are allowed we'll either. It's all for a physical project. And it's, everything's supposed to be purchased here. 70% should be purchased locally. Again, it's trying to grow the sales tax revenue base by circulating dollars within our community. I think our biggest objective in doing this whole grant was to show that Hot Springs is still open and alive. It's a main thoroughbred for a 385. Or, yeah, 385 is people drive through, and the more buildings we have closed, look like nobody's in it. They just keep going on. So that was the intent. So I really believe it's a good positive thing. Okay. How many applications were there? 
would be at six on my system. So we weren't able to grant what all that was requested of us, but this was what was signed by the committee. And those that were awarded and those who were not awarded are still able to apply for the next round, assuming there's a the next round. Okay, so what pardon? Who received them? This. Well, they haven't yet. When they, when they, after we vote, I will tell you. <laughs> oh. okay. I mean, it's in, your, it's in the packet, but um, just for the sake of, if the, you know, depending on how the vote goes, on, I'll read it off. <coughs> so any other discussion on how we distribute the 5000 that was already approved by this council? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I didn't hear ever. Can you just do a roll call? So we've got some quiet voices in this group. Nelson? No. Holmes? Yes. Wetzel? Yes. Hagen? Yes. Kramer? Yes. Spillane? Yes. Schwarzenbach? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Motion carries. The um, distribution of the $5,000 is to the building at 102 North Chicago. It formerly actually had in signal in there. For those of us in telecommunications, there is a difference. Um, but they're calling it the Verizon building. Um, they receive, they will receive $768.06. I'm not sure how this math worked, but I don't care, I guess. It adds up. We were very careful. Yeah. <laughs> Red Rock River Resort, um, $1,400. Earth Goods, uh, $990. And Museum of Childhood, which is on Jennings, that's a, a new business there, uh, eighteen hundred forty-one and ninety-four cents. So again, motion carried. Right <clears throat> Item D: Discussion and possible motion to reclassify city administrator position as a full-time exempt effective on the tomorrow, 16th. I'd like to make a motion that we table this until our next meeting. Which next meeting? The admin yes. or Six. city okay. council? Yeah. There's, there might be some questions surrounding it still. I'll say it. Okay. Which is fine. Okay. So I have a motion to table and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Tabled. No discussion the allowed. Next city council meeting, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and that's how that's supposed to work, so you did that right. Thank you. And finance officer report. She's doing minutes. <laughs> I have very much to report. I'll keep it brief. Um, just a reminder to other council members that have not turned in their 2014 audit reports for their new copy. Uh, there are some verbiage changes that Caroline mentioned were gone over and I'd like to get you the corrected copy. Our website has been updated. For those of you that look to our website for that information, it has the correct um, verbiage in that document. There were no changes to any of the numbers or any of the opinions, just the verbiage changes in the auditor's comments. Um, so please bring me your old ones so I can give you the new ones as soon as you can. And then also, um, yeah, Caroline yeah. mentioned the <laughs> SDSU-led workshop surrounding board development design for elected officials. I'm looking for feedback on dates. The more feedback I can get, hopefully the more well-attended we can have that uh, great workshop and training opportunity. Um, next meeting, look forward to the first reading of our annual appropriation ordinance. That ready, um, first meeting in September. We'll do that. have the first reading of that ordinance. And um, I believe all of you received the email with the agenda for the SDML annual meeting, which will be October 5th through 7th. Um, for those of you that can't go, that's all right. But if you are interested in going, let me know so I can make sure to get you registered. It is in Rapid City this year, which is a very nice location for those of us not very far away. So if you're looking forward to taking advantage of any of those uh, workshops or sessions, <coughs> please let me know. Thanks, Ms. No one? We talked a little bit in that in finance about the wayfinding signage, and I was decided at that time not to pursue it with a professional consultant, but try and do as much as we can in-house, then coordinate with the DOT, 
So that's our plan moving forward. For those not familiar, wayfinding signage, also directional signage. It benefits both pedestrians and vehicle traffic. Our goal is to integrate that directional signage with a 385 project in 2020 and 2021, and also maybe expand on that as well along the truck bypass at university. So those using our arterial streets, our main streets, can get directions to things like Evans Plunge, our golf course, but also the information centers, Mueller Center, Chamber of Commerce, the even things like the RV dump station, our community assets that people seek out who don't have good direction to get there. So we'll look to do that in-house. It'll be challenging, but at the same time, the DOT is responsive. We have good contacts there. It shouldn't be an issue to get done. We will certainly save some money doing that in-house. Um, do be prepared that the signs do cost money. So when that comes up, there'll be an expense for the signs. We already talked with one sign manufacturer. Confidently, we're looking at an expense between forty to 60000 So the whole project for that amount, for a comprehensive 25 to 30 destination, uh, sign program, I think that's a very good price. When well, spearfish to theirs, and again, we're not spearfish, that's been clarified. Just their cost is <coughs> $26,000, uh, $27,000. So we're definitely saving money by doing this part in house. With that, we also get into the wayfinding along the Freedom Trail. So when you're a bicycle or a pedestrian on the Freedom Trail, it gives signals to what's coming up next, whether there's picnic shelters, playground equipment, restrooms. I know when you're on the trail, it's kind of nice to know there's a restroom coming up ahead might be available to you. So that will happen hopefully before that time. Those signs would be much cheaper if we can do all that in-house, no problem. That will come up again at the parks meeting here in September. We'll talk more about the Freedom Trail by finding, especially as we look to expand the Freedom Trail. It might not happen this year or next year, but as we look to go from Evans Plunge up to Lower and Upper Chautauqua Park, <coughs> we'll know how far is Brookside from Chautauqua and then get directions that way. Evans Plunge right now, we've already started a conversation with all season screen printing here in town. If you look around Hot Springs, there's a few places you can get bison apparel, Hot Springs bison apparel. And so all seasons being the only screen printer business in, in Hot Springs locally, we're talking with them to carry some of their product in our gift shop and uh, give them a retail space. What we do with the arrangement there is they provide us the product, we get a share of the profit, but a lot of the cost falls on the manufacturer. So as bison athletics kick off, looking to get more bison product into our gift shop, to get more foot traffic into Evans Plunge, into our gift shop, and then maybe roll out some new fresh designs as well that uh, the public might be a big fan of once they're on t-shirts or on hoodies. So that's kind of coming down the pipeline. School does start this Monday. They do half days to begin with, and it's <coughs> dismissal time. So you'll see the school lights flashing when you're driving. It's 15 miles an hour in the speed limit or in the school zone. And Chief Close tomorrow, I think, has a good article for the public as to why that's important to people follow that speed limit, even though it feels like a highway you should be doing 35 on. So be aware that school's in session as a Monday, and we'll need to obey all posted speed, speed limits. And also, I'll just be a reminder, 831, last Wednesday of August, is Recycling Day. We've had great success with recycling so far. I'm anxious to um, see what we collect this go around, but we've collected tons and tons of trash that's been diverted to recycling because of our new curbside program. So the last Wednesday of the month is the pickup day. <coughs> that happens to be the last day of the month, this month, the 31st. That's all I have for our report. Thanks, Nolan. Appreciate it. I don't really have a report because I'm focused on executive session. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I really want to share with the council. And so, um, if you need a motion, you can show into executive session. I do. I'll make that. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good. So, appreciate you all. Okay. I think all right. We are back from executive sessions. I'm going to go back to personnel. And um, I'll make a motion that we accept all the personnel items to be um, voted on as written, except item E. I second that. Um, pardon? That's good. I know we already discussed, but... Do we need to wait on Chris? No, he's rolling. Okay. I know, it's a little confusing. Can we just... Can we just take the Yeah, you have to turn it on. You're off. Chris, your book behind you is off. Nope, oh, oh, I got it back on. I'll, I'll knock the camera over doing it. The personnel items A through F with the exception of E. 
that we um, vote as written. And I second that. As written? Yep. That they are the way that they are written on you? With the exception. Yeah, with the exception of the IP itself. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And I'll make another motion that I agree um, do not accept it as higher. Discussion? All in favor of not hiring uh, I Aye. Mean. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried to not hire. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Yep. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank